In 2012, the world learned about Joseph Kony and the Brutal Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA, through the Kony 2012 campaign. But many years before this, Betty Bagombe showed incredible bravery when she ventured into the jungle to negotiate with the group. It was 1992, and she was a government minister in Uganda, negotiating with warlords known for their violent guerrilla tactics and child abductions. Realizing the value of meeting face to face, Ms. Bagombe was able to open up a dialogue with the rebels, and she went on to become a lead negotiator in Uganda's ongoing peace process. I made up my mind I was going to do everything possible to reach out to the warlords and talk to them, talk them into uh, a peaceful solution. I was determined because I felt that if meeting with the rebels could bring peace, would save lives, it was worthwhile making the commitment. Many hold up Ms. Bagambi's success in getting the rebels to the negotiating table as an example of the power of words in war. And Tara Sonenshine from George Washington University believes that Ms. Bagambi's storytelling skills were an important mechanism in engaging with the rebels. Ultimately, um, she was able to knock down the walls and reach consensus with some very violent people. Ms. Sonenshine worked for the United States Institute of Peace, as well as the International Crisis Group, and argues that stories are an integral part of any approach to peace building. I think without a story, you don't have any grasp of the human dimension of war and peace. Individuals sharing their experiences of war can be a useful way for communities to begin the healing process post-conflict. If people get an opportunity to tell their story to those who were their enemies in war, it can also be a key way to bring about reconciliation. By discussing what happened, trying to view events from the other side's perspective, and ideally creating a common narrative, the chances of past grievances fueling future violence can be reduced. It's a way for community grief, for community cleansing, for community expulsion of hatred, and for confrontation and moving forward in building a post-conflict society. But storytelling as a peace-building tool has drawn criticism, mainly over concerns for whose story is being told and remembered, and whose is absent. Ms. Sonenshine says that it is an important aspect to be wary of, but it doesn't negate the benefit. The only, um, I think, downside is when stories themselves are not inclusive of all dimensions of the community. So I think we have to be open to telling not just two sides of a story, but the many sides of a story. This is Jeff Walsh, reporting for Peace News.